Aha. Stan scooped her up out of the little baby stroller and she smelled so horribly. The malnutrition, the lack of daily care and giving her baths, her mouth, her teeth were coated with yellow calcium buildup. When she's here, she is, she's five and a half years old and she's 19 pounds and just stays in the little fetal position like an infant. all of that, I remember thinking that she's so beautiful. It's not that she's beautiful because her teeth are jacked up or she smells or any of this, but she's beautiful because I'm her father. She's my daughter. Stan was working, he was on duty, and kids were at therapy, so I asked him to meet me at, um, at a restaurant to go have a quick lunch. And so we had about 45 minutes at the lunch table, and I just kept putting it off. and Just talking about everything else under the sun, about, except what I needed to talk to him about, and my purpose of meeting him was. So finally we got down to like the last 10 minutes before I needed to go get the kids from therapy, and I had Isabel's picture on my phone and I just threw it at Stan across the table and I said, I feel like God is telling us we have to adopt this little girl and he's in his uniform, there's all kinds of people around and I just start boohooing and my husband looks at me and looks at this phone and I immediately just threw my hands up on my head and I was like, oh Ashley, it's not time. Uh, we've decided, you know, we were going to wait later this year, we're going to adopt again, but it's too soon. We had just finalized our adoption a month earlier with uh, Michaela, and it, it's just too soon. I kind of froze with fear at them for a hot minute, and then I just kind of poured my heart out to him. Pretty much just said, you know, like I just don't think that there's one excuse um, that can come out of my mouth that justifies telling that little girl no that she doesn't deserve to be in a family just because she comes with all of these scary medical concerns. He came home that night heavy burdened and he and I were sitting on the couch one evening, that evening just kind of solemn and just kind of, you know, lots of heavy stuff we're having to think about and make a decision about and our oldest son Addison, who's now 18, walks in the house and um, He's like, what's wrong? And I was like, well, I said, there's this little girl in China. I remember Addison saying, oh, Lord. <laughs> yeah, he knew, he knew what was coming. And uh, he, uh, she said, well, Addison, she's, she's blind. She, she can't see. And uh, I remember Addison just putting his head down for a, a short time. And I remember him looking up, and our 18-year-old son talking to his 46-year-old father and his 40-year-old mother, and, and he uh, he looked up and he said, uh, 
you need to go get her. And I was like, Addison, it's not that easy, son. Uh, adoption's not easy, but this little girl's blind. You just don't pick up and go get a blind child. I mean, I mean <laughs> it's not that easy. And uh, I remember him looking down again, and he looked back up, and Addison said, Dad, would she be better off blind in an orphanage? Or would she be better off blind in our home? We all know what the answer is. So we went to bed that night, woke up the next morning, he went back to work, walked in the door, and he just was like, okay, let's the doctor. I said, are you serious? He said, yes. So we traveled within six months to the day of me telling Stan about Isabel. We, we left on, on July 25th to bring her home. Isabel's new life and all the progress she has made. Thank you so much and don't forget to like and share this video. Da, 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 da.